Just listen to what it sounds like in outer space. What? Han Meditation. Hey guys, as you can see, I have all these journals. The link will be in the description. Hello guys, I am Han. This is Kelly. Hi. We are Han Meditations. We're back with another interesting video. Now, this is one of the topic. This is a topic that I'm basically an expert on. Because we're talking about <laughs> angels in space now, mm. which is by definition an extraterrestrial. That so we've done a lot of videos on extraterrestrials. We've seen a lot of UFOs and a lot of spaceships. And it's, you know, it's pretty out of this world, actually, literally. So if you guys are interested in actually seeing any of the UFO pictures and all that, just put it in the comments and we can show you guys the pictures that we have because we have some clear pictures of UFOs. But, you know, I don't know if this is going to be about UFOs. I don't know if this is going to be about aliens as we know it or just angels or just beings from otherworldly beings which is by definition extraterrestrial meaning they're not terrestrial to this planet so mm -hmm. but either way i'm very <laughs> excited for this video aren't you kelly yeah so let's check it out let's get started so when we're talking about the angels the prophet ﷺ was asked particularly on the night of al-isra wal mi'raj you know there were some people that questioned that journey how he made that journey there are some people that just wanted to know what it was like. And a group of companions came to the Prophet ﷺ and they asked the Messenger ﷺ, what did it sound like? You know, what did you see and what did it sound like? I mean, as you're traveling through these galaxies with rapid speed, what is it that you heard out there? And the Messenger ﷺ, he says, Inni ara ma la tarun. He says, look, I see things that you are incapable of seeing. وَأَسْمَعُ مَا لَا تَسْمَعُونَ And I hear things that you are incapable of hearing. He says, إِنَّ السَّمَاءَ أَطَّتْ Said the heavens are creaking. أَطَّتْ means they are shaking violently. وَحُقَّ لَهَا أَنْ طَئِتْ And there's a reason why the sound of it is like it's shaking violently. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, because there isn't a space of four fingers except that there is an angel that, is, that has been created in prostration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is doing nothing but declaring his praises. So he described the sound of vibration, okay? I want you just to listen quickly to what it sounds like in outer space. NASA actually had a recording from outer, outer space they put up 16 years ago, right before the turn of the millennium. And the name of the research was, Our Universe is Not Silence. Because there was this idea that if you went out to outer space, you wouldn't hear anything except for the moving objects. Just listen to what it sounds like in outer space. What? Come on. Whoa. Obviously, you know, that's good enough. You guys can't hear everything. Um, but if you get a chance to listen to it, it's actually quite breathtaking. And actually one of the researchers who published that research said that it sounds like a billion men doing Gregorian chants all simultaneously at the same time. SubhanAllah. When I heard that, I remembered this hadith of the Messenger ﷺ. Look, I see things that you don't see and I hear things that you don't hear. And that's a sign of hope for us as well because we're always paranoid about jinn being everywhere and shayateen being everywhere. The number of angels compared to the number of jinn is dramatically different. There's a huge difference between how many angels there are, are out there and how many jinn and devils there are out there. So this is a magnificent creation, the malaika. They, you know, belief in them is the second pillar of our faith. And subhanAllah, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says the reason why it's the second pillar of our faith is because of Jibreel alayhi salam. Because the only reason, for example, we don't necessarily have, well, we have to believe in the jinn, but it's not necessarily a pillar of faith, right? Can you be a believer without believing in the jinn? No, you can't. It's in the Quran, Surah Al-Jinn. But it's not a separate category of the pillars of faith. The reason being that all of the pillars of faith have to do with the integrity of the message. And so the reason why a pillar of faith, there's a separate pillar of faith, of belief in the Malaika is because of this angel Jibreel alayhi salam that brings the message to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So it clarifies the integrity of the Messenger to the Messenger 
which helps us fully appreciate this message as well. And obviously, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us many things about these angels. And the thing is, is that it's in every culture and every theology, you have some form of belief in the angels, right? In Judeo-Christian thought, you have a belief in, in the angels as being a, a, cre a creation that, you know, can make mistakes. They've been reduced to fallibility. They can fall. So you have a concept of dark angels, Lucifer, the devil. And in fact, they don't actually separately believe in a category of jinn. They're simply demons and dark angels. So they do have that category. They do have that belief. And within Christianity, you'll find many different beliefs about who the specific angels are and what their roles are. So for example, in Mormonism, Gabriel is Nuh He's actually Noah, right? So you'll find different beliefs as to who they are within Christianity and within Judaism. You'll find that uh, in, Ju in Judeo-Christian thought as well, the angels are created from fire. Whereas the Prophet ﷺ told us they're created from what? From light. And that excludes all forms of impurity. And as Suyuti rahimahullah says, Allah chose to create them from the most beautiful creation, which is light, because that is, the, that is what He chose to create His hijab from, His veil. As the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah speaks from behind a veil of light. So it's the most beautiful creation and it excludes all forms of impurity. And it's a testimony to their infallibility. Now, do they have physical presences as well? Do they have a physical presence or are they just light? Right? They do have a physical presence. And they have a, a pretty dominating physical presence. Right? And you know, a lot of times when you see portrayals of angels, because again, you'll find them even in, in, in the thought of Confucius, there's a belief in angels. Even the pagans of Mecca believed in angels, but they called them what? Banatul Rahman, the daughters of the most merciful. So if you looked up a Wikipedia entry of Gabriel, for example, and you saw the portrayal, right, and you see the portrayal of most angels in, in, you know, in drawings and in sculpture, you'll find that they look like babies in diapers, right? They're very weak, small creatures, right? Whereas the portrayal that we find in our religion is that this is a strong creation, a huge creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that do as they are commanded, that exclude all forms of fault, all forms of flaw, all forms of impurity. Just as we testify that the messengers of God, all of them, Abraham, Noah, Jesus, Moses, David, peace be upon them all, just as we testify that they are all infallible and that they do not commit those, those mistakes, the angels as well are completely infallible and do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with anything that's been given to them. As Allah tells us in the Quran, لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون That they do not disobey a single command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do exactly as they are told. However, do they love certain things? Do they hate certain things? Do they have characters? Yes, they do. They're not robots, right? So you'll find numerous narrations which talk about what offends the angels and what causes them to come near. Arguments or, or debates amongst the angels, the angels of mercy and the angels of punishment. And Jibreel alayhi salam as well, having a character. Now what do they look like? All right, Allah tells us they do have wings, not those two little weak uh, feathery wings that you see. They do have wings. Uli ajniha, mathna wa thulatha wa ruba'a. Some of them have two wings. Some of them have three wings, some of them have four wings. يَزِيدُ فِي الْخَلْقِ مَا يَشَاءُ And Allah increases them as He wills. Now, that automatically tells us that they're of different sizes. But what would an average angel look like? Just an average malak, all right? To give you an idea of just an average angel, uh, Safwan ibn Sulaym radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he narrates that مَا صَلَّى أَحَد No one enters into his salah. This is just you praying in your room, thinking that no one's around you, thinking that you're all alone. Except that there are angels the size of mountains that are praying there with you. You think you're in your room all by yourself. You've got angels, creatures the size of mountains that are there praying with you, that are there glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you. All right, what about an angel that has a bigger task then? An angel that, that, you know, that belongs to a more elite group of angels. How about Hamalat al Arsh, the bearers of the throne, right? We mentioned them in our supplications. Allahumma inni asbahtu ushiduk wa ushidu Hamalat al Arshik. You know, we, we call them to bear witness at times. Allah praises this group of angels. 
What do they look like? The Prophet wasallam, he says, I've been given permission to tell you about just one of those angels, one of the angels who bears the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, إِنَّمَا بَيْنَ الشَّحْمَةِ أُذُنِهِ إِلَىٰ عَاتِقِهِ مَسِيرَةُ سَبْعِمِئَةِ عَامٍ He said, the distance between his earlobe and his shoulder is a journey of 700 years. That's just from here to here. And the narration of Ibn Khuzayma, the Prophet ﷺ said, a bird could fly that journey in 700 years. So it's not just you walking and taking breaks. If a bird just was flying continuously for 700 years, he'd only make it from here to here on one of those angels. So how do we even determine who's a bigger angel and who's a smaller angel? And what does this have to do with Jibreel alayhi salam? Al Imam al Suyuti rahimahullah says, the greater the task the angel has been given, the greater the size of the angel. So that tells you right away that Jibreel alayhi salam is even bigger than that. He's the biggest of the angels and the greatest in size because he has the greatest of tasks. Okay? Jibreel alayhi salam also belongs to what's known as the most elite class of the Mala'ika, Al Muqassimati Amra. The scholars traditionally called them as they are mentioned in the Qur'an, those who apportion the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are four. The first of them, Jibreel alayhi salam. And he is the angel that through him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's very beautiful how the scholars classed it. They said through him, Hayatul Qulub, the life of the heart. Why? Because he brings revelation. And through revelation, our hearts live. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala apportions through him, al wahi Okay, so each and every single prophet that received the revelation received it from Jibreel alayhi salam. Unlike humans, angels do not have free will. They are entirely obedient to Allah's commands, performing duties such as recording human deeds, conveying messages and executing divine plans. Their purpose is solely to serve and worship Allah, making them integral to the Islamic understanding of the unseen world. Among the most well-known angels is Jibreel, who delivered Allah's revelations to the prophets, including the Quran to Prophet Muhammad Another significant angel is Mikail, responsible for providing sustenance like rain and food to Allah's creation. And Israfil will blow the trumpet on the day of judgment. Azrael is tasked with taking souls at the end of life. These angels demonstrate Allah's mercy, justice and omnipotence by fulfilling essential roles in both life and the hereafter. When the scientists, they went to space, they heard the angels. Belief in angels is a core tenet of Islamic faith as outlined in the Quran and Hadith. Muslims believe that angels constantly accompany each person recording their good and bad deeds in preparation for the day of judgment. This belief encourages mindfulness in actions reminding Muslims that they are accountable to Allah for their choices. The existence of angels reassures Muslims of Allah's presence and support as they serve as protectors and guides, maintaining a connection between the human and the divine. Wow, mm. that was an interesting video, Kelly. I thought I was going to get more into talking about extraterrestrials maybe, but it really stayed on the realm of the divine and angels. And one of the things that I thought was really interesting is they said that the angels don't have free will. Now, that's a concept that a lot of people can't understand, especially humans on this planet. It doesn't mean that, you know, you're basically a robot, as they said, you can't do anything. But it does mean that you are or you are connected to the Most High. You have the will of God within you, and you're going to follow through with that will. And it also means that I like that they said that they don't have the concept because a lot of times 
we're still viewing things through our viewpoint of Christianity, and that's just the way the world works. We have fallen angels. Lucifer was, you know, a good angel. He turned bad. That's not even possible in Islam. Yeah. So I actually like that because it really doesn't make sense that there's an angel that falls and turns bad. Now, I do believe if it was an extraterrestrial being, that could be possible. But if it's just an angel, which is a divine being connected to God completely, then know that it is not possible. As it said in the video, there is no free will, which is a very interesting and awesome concept that I absolutely do like. So what did you think about that, Kelly? I honestly thought that was very, very interesting. And I actually think it, it might be more interested actual terrestrial, extraterrestrials than you may think because, you know, it's just funny because in our last video I was just saying how I think people who are into, like, New Age spiritualism would really be surprised about how many kind of those type of connections exist in Islam. And honestly, as I was listening to this, it honestly was truly reminding me of essentially what I'm trained in to do past life regressions, and it's all by this woman, Dolores Cannon, who's literally written, like, 25 books of the transcripts of people going under their past life regression and afterwards their subconscious mind comes out, answers any question that they have about life and can also do healing and now hear me out because as this mentioned from, you know, these angels come from light and it's from the veil of light that surrounds God and it's really interesting because in all of these regressions, there's obviously 25 books, so many, many written and recorded, and there's certain beings, certain souls that said they came to Earth for the first time, and so when she regressed them to where they couldn't go to a past life, where they actually went, they said they were in the light. They were just filled with light. They were with God. They were just sitting in the light. That's that, that was what their existence is, but there was a call to come to Earth and help. So they became earth souls, but they had existed in that light the entire time. And I honestly think that's really a big connection right there, to tell you the truth. And also something I wanted to mention very quickly is about Angel Jabril and how it mentions how he is just from the tip of the ear or whatever is a journey of 700 years. And it makes me think, and I know, sorry, I actually said days in the last video, but I, I didn't mean years. I know that's what it said. So it makes me think, because also in these books that I'm referencing and these, these regressions, some people, it is said, some souls are very powerful. And so they're really powerful, and they're actually living more than one life at once. So if we kind of think of things metaphysically, right, we have our whole entire universe, all different dimensions, all different planets, universes, dimensions existing at once. Now, if we think about this like on a spiritual metaphysical level, how could an angel actually be that big? What if, hear me out, what if it actually means that it's not really a physical thing, right? Because this is the universe that works kind of differently. What if it means these powerful beings to, ex to exist in so many dimensions at once, they're actually living multiple lives at once? Powerful beings. Now, this is a theory. This is just how my mind works. And it's just something to think about. It really is because honestly. Yeah, I don't know about that. Hey, this way of thinking brought us here. So, hey, all I'm saying is keep your minds open. You never know I what mean, kind look, of connections any, are out there. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. And no one really has the full answers. It could just be no one. just straight up. That's how big they are. It could be. Because there is no real scale when you get to that level. I mean, it's just. But, yeah, because it said it was like very specific from the ear to the shoulder, you know. <laughs> so yeah. that's a very specific length. But, yeah, it's just so interesting, man. And I really do uh, I do really do enjoy doing these videos. It's just every time we do one, it's just like I'm thinking about it all day. So, you know, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for watching the video, subscribing, liking the video. And thank you to all the people that donate, guys. We really appreciate your donations. We love you guys more than you ever realize, and we need it more than you ever realize. And we're here for you guys working hard, trying to spread the word of God. Thank you guys for being here. We'll see you in the next, next video. video.